Hi, welcome to Crime in the Mitten. We are your hosts. I'm Shelby. And I'm Alia. Every week, you'll hear a new true crime story based in Michigan. From the mysterious missing cases to the gruesome murders that left the police struggling to stay on the scene. We're giving you the inside scoop on what's going on in our Mitten State. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of Michigan true crime. Hey everyone, we're back with another Netflix documentary mm-hmm. recap. Uh, this week we are doing Dirty John episodes one through four because it's eight episodes to it in total. We're not doing eight. And we're not putting you all through that. <laughs> like, we're it's good, but right. that's like intense lecture hours mm-hmm. now at this point. Yes, no. <laughs> we don't do lectures. <laughs> so we both watched it and Aaliyah knows definitely a lot more about it because she suggested the idea though so we're both going to be talking about it this mm-hmm. time so this should definitely be a good recap this yeah. time this go around so so i just want to try it wanted to be no i did have notes i lost them i have no idea where the notes are <laughs> so don't think shelby's gonna leave all the true crime mm-hmm. or the netflix documentaries i just really lost my notes but I listened to the podcast when it first came out. I watched the show as soon as it came out. And then I watched it and listened two more times each yeah. to do this. So I completely know everything that's exactly. going on. She's told me facts that I, I didn't know about this. Notes. So she's verified. I'm in this. <laughs> she's definitely verified and checked out. So what are some things you knew before watching this doc? I think you said. Like, I mean, you before watching stuff. the documentary, yeah. because I listened to the podcast, I pretty much knew everything. Yeah. But what threw me off is in the documentary, they changed, um, they call her Veronica in the show, but really her name was what? What did you say it was? And I can't even think of it. Yeah, but Veronica's not her real name. But I was, we gonna say Veronica because mm-hmm. that's what they, if we're going based off the show and they call her Veronica in the show, so we're gonna call her Veronica during yep. this. <laughs> But yeah, Veronica was not her. Her damn name is Jacqueline. That's what it was. Jacqueline, Jacqueline yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what I knew about before the show was you don't trust anybody named John. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a lot of cases so far. And any time a John has popped up, no good. Guilty. <laughs> no good. So when I read this, like when I seen the name of this, I was like, oh yeah. That just no. adds on to my belief. <laughs> So, we get into the plot of it. Do you want to give them a rundown of, like, the beginning that happened or, like... Okay, so, basically, what's her... Um, Debra. Debra, this was her fourth, this, her fourth marriage. So, that was, like, a uh, little, little questionable. Yeah. So, before getting married... Uh, she had been through all of these other failed marriages, so her kids were kind of iffy on like, do we trust him? Or they automatically, Veronica automatically did not trust him. I mean, as she should, as though. she like, should. You're looking out for your mom, and she was making bank. Yeah. Oh, so, she was an interior designer. She so. was an interior designer for like a big company. Like she had gone far with her company on her own. So like, when all of these guys come in, obviously it's sketchy because like, what do you really what here do for? You want? Like, and then the way he like. When she was in the vault getting her purse, she had a vault full of Birkin bags. Yeah. And when John walked up, or Veronica had the bags, not Deborah. And when he like walked up to her while she's in her room, in her closet, in her vault, <laughs> and he just walked up behind her like, "What? What are you hiding? What's in the vault, kiddo? Like that's just weird. Like what are you doing? Like yeah. so that leads me that if I was Veronica, I'd be like, "What are you here for? Like on standby immediately? Immediately? Him. Yeah." It's just like what I know a mom is a nice lady and all, but what do you want? Do like you she's want? a well off lady she's too. Very, at that. And then it like we go to mom, like our they mom did everything for them. Mm-hmm. Deborah did everything for her kids. So like somebody coming in on this, you kinda cutting into <laughs> you our cut funds. Me some, I'm getting <laughs> you cut me into my money. Yeah. Which is weird because like even after four marriages, the fact that like you still want to get out there you and you're online dating and stuff. I mean, I commend her. Yeah, you're like, right. Because you want to get out there and like, find you know, love eventually. <laughs> but like, that was expensive. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So she meets up with John. And after so many other failed days. Yeah. It was a bunch of funny, like, <laughs> like it was kind of funny watching, like, because it was realistic. Like, right. All the dates that she went on. No, this were, is like, really how it goes. Not. That if they just weren't it, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. So the first date with John, they hit it off. 
they doing good and stuff like right. that. They get back to her house and he wants to, you know, have a nightcap. Is that what they call it? Right. So he automatically, go, she like go in the bathroom to freshen up and he jumps in her bed. <laughs> and she's like, uh, he's like, you know, I prefer that we stay in the front of the house. And he's like, it's just so comfortable, blah, blah. I literally love it up here. And she's really confused. Like, no, I don't want you in my room. <laughs> So she had to put him out, and then he stormed out like a toddler. Like he yeah, had a whole attitude, like he, a whole attention, tam- and walked tam- out. tantrum, and slammed the door and walked out. So she just thought, like, okay, another failed day. That's it. So he hits her up the next day. The next though. day she at work. <laughs> <laughs> he called her like, you know, I'm so sorry. I just thought you were just like another tender day. Like we all know what we really want, and I just thought, you know. You were too good to be true, and I just didn't know how like, to react. Like, just pumping her up with all these, like, sweet nothings at this point. Like, I mean, I was there for it in the beginning, because, like, I watched right. it fresh. It was I was like, okay, cool, Mike, you know, I kind of get that. But, like, you still acted immature, so, and it like, showed that you had, like, a slight temper, temper at that point. So, they go on a second date, and it goes good. And I think, don't they, like, you know... They do have that nightcap. No, because was she tried. And then he was like, no, I messed it up the last time. Oh, yeah. We can so wait it next off. time. We can wait it off till <laughs> the next time. Yeah, so the next, next time, third date, that was the charm. They say like three, third time's a charm. So it happened. So like after that, they fall like head over heels for mm-hmm. each other. That's the night he spent the night. Yeah. And, and then... Veronica was not happy about that. Veronica Voigt was so vocal like about mm-hmm. how she from felt the beginning. from the beginning. And it wasn't even just situations with John in general. She was pretty vocal about yeah, a lot a of lot stuff. Of like she, If that's how she felt, she was going to know. She's going to say it regardless. And then she even says that in the podcast. Like, Tara's just so sweet. And yeah. she's like, I wish I could be like Tara, my mom, but I'm not. <laughs> so, like, but at the same time, though, it was good. She was mm-hmm. like that, though, because when everybody was sitting here thinking nothing, she was already hiring, like, private <laughs> investigators. <laughs> like, this isn't right. So... The thing that killed me is not even deep into because this is still all within a mm-hmm. one span. This is like she yeah, within... she rents the Bayfront property for them. Yes, and this, this is, is only a month one. and a half them being together. <laughs> and she, he's like, you know, I really wish this is John's. This is going on to be John's second marriage. So he had a wife and two daughters before. Like he had two little daughters. So he like. They're looking at the house and he's like, oh, you know, in a perfect world without child support and whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'd love to get us this house. She's like, is this the one you want? I'm like, oh. I'm like, no, 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 no. And it's so sad. You literally just sounded exactly like her. <laughs> like, like, yeah, if this is what you want, then I'll, I'll get it. So she got like, work. And then he's like, he did the typical, no, you no, don't have you to. Don't knowing have to. that she's the type of person no. that she's going to do it. Like, right. The dealerships know her by name. That's how, like, she got it like that. So, right. The dealership really knew her by name. She went to the dealership, and they're like, oh, hi. We got another one in the back that you might like. Like, that means you know that she's the type of person know to just what kind of money she drop got. money on that. So she tells Veronica that, like, she's moving out because the therapist, the therapist suggested just... that they can't work on their relationship being so close together. Right. You didn't take no 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 suggestion that well. You was trying you to move in with John, but with John. she knew. I feel like the fact that you had to kind of lie about that, like you kind of knew, like mm-hmm. okay, like yeah, Veronica don't like him, but there's some red flags there. Like red why flags. do I have to hide this as yeah. much as I do? <laughs> so Tara visits for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Yep, visit for Thanksgiving. Tara and, <laughs> and her boyfriend lived out of state. And she was in school to be a, um, a to be like a vet, not Something necessarily like that, a vet. Like though. basic, she was going to school to be like some type of vet or like a groomer, a pet groomer. Oh yeah, because she yeah. was like learning how to do like how all the shaving her, and clipping the toenails yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So she wanted to be a, a pet groomer. So she was in school for that, and her and her boyfriend lived out the out of the state, and um, so when her her boyfriend came, what's his name? Terry? No, it wasn't Terry. It was something else. It's irrelevant because they ended up breaking up. They broke up. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> so Tara and her boyfriend visited for 
Thanksgiving. And when they got to the house, when they made it to the beach house where Deborah and John stayed, well, they didn't know John stayed there yet. It was just Deborah. It was right. They thought they were, she was going to her mom's house. And John was there trying to move in the furniture. But it was so bad. Like, he was struggling. With the mattress. <laughs> With the mattress. And then it was like, he was so rude. They were trying to help him. He didn't really want to accept the help, so he just kind of like brushed them off. It was like, no, you know, go walk your dog. Like, just yeah, come back when you're like, we're here. not ready for you. We're not ready for you. And yeah. I was like, okay, I can uh, sit on the couch. Like, it's my mama house. It's my mama house. Like, dude, you don't even know her. <laughs> like, I know her longer than you. Literally, but, I don't know her. So Tara's like, you don't even go here. <laughs> do you even go here? Tara talks to Veronica about it, and mm -hmm. they're like, you need to find out if he lives there or not. Right, because. I was, Tara was staying there for the holiday and while she was in her mom's bathroom she saw his stuff on a counter mm -hmm. and Deborah was like oh no he's just here from time to time he doesn't live here it's just nice for his stuff to already be here when he comes it makes it convenient for him okay <laughs> so <laughs> in no way are we like messing with the mom like that though it's sad what happened like, but it's like there's funny moments in it where you just like you don't okay. have to do that <laughs> okay but yeah so um Tara goes to Veronica's apartment or whatever, and she's like, I think he lives there. I'm like, well, what do you mean you think? We need to know. Like, it's no you thinking. You need to go investigate. She's like, why can't you do it? She's like, uh, well, you're the one staying with them, so you're the one who's going to go like, and investigate. What does it look like me just randomly coming over and like, all right, I'm about to go to your closet. Right. <laughs> so after Tara leaves Veronica, she goes back to her mom's. And she does what Veronica told her to do. And she went and she looked through the closet and she found his, um, the little like his like nursing, nursing certificate. certificate or something like that. But he's supposed to be, like he's supposed to be an anesthesiologist. Yeah. So she found this nursing certificate and, you know, she's just looking through. Deborah walks in and is like, it's like, what are you doing? It's like, so he lives here. Like, why are his papers here? Like, he has boxes of papers like, but he doesn't it looks like he looks it's obvious that homey he here yeah no it's very obvious like, like they just, didn't even try to hide it you really. just moved in and he has more stuff here than, than you, do. you do it's suspicious it's extremely yeah so she's like um deborah's like no i was just gonna get some stuff framed for him like he doesn't live here so big bad john walks in the room <laughs> he steps into the closet he's like what are you doing? You don't talk to your mother like that, blah, blah. So now Tara's yelling at the both of them, like, to just tell the truth. So, you know, Tara's yelling, and he's like, what messed up me up? And he was yeah. like, my kids would have got smacked up for some, something like that. Yeah. Like, but these aren't your kids. And the whole time, you the mom... You can't be around your kids for a reason. Yeah, and the whole time, the mom didn't say anything. She didn't try to defend her she was just at like, all. <laughs> And she's like, Tara's sitting there asking him, like, you're going to let him talk to me like this? Mm -hmm. But I think the craziest part, like, after all this ha happens, they confront him about it. You find out he's living there. He says his rude stuff to him. The end of the episode, they get married. They like, right married. after this happened, they get married. But wait, they celebrated Thanksgiving first. Oh, yeah. They, without, um... Without Tara, because... Yeah. So, listening to the podcast, so on the show, it made it look like... Tara and her boyfriend just left. But when you listen to the podcast, they put them out, mm -hmm. like told them to leave. And they reference it, and then they don't tell, like they don't come right out and say it in a Netflix doc. Mm -hmm. They say it like when she's talking to Veronica at her house, she's like, "Yeah, because they put me out." They put and me stuff. out. But right. if you it, for the, but if you were just watching the Netflix, you can take it as, "Oh, she's taking it too far." Right. But no, she's in reality, they it. really did. They put, her, put out. her out. Yeah. They put them out, so obviously they didn't get to spend Thanksgiving with the family. So the grandma, obviously they're not gonna tell the grandma what really happened. Mm -hmm. So when Deborah mom comes for Thanksgiving, they're like, "Oh, it just sucked." Like Tara basically saying like Tara was being a brat. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want to spend Thanksgiving with the family because John was there the whole yeah. time. John put her out. Yeah, so I just and didn't like how like it always it made it seem like the kids like they were like just out to get them for no reason yeah. at all. Yeah. He was like fueling them. But that was just episode one alone. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, and it got to the part where he wanted to talk things over with Veronica. It was like, oh, oh yeah. can we go out in the back and talk? And she's like. No, no, I'm good. And you can like, talk to me right here, <laughs> but I'm not going anywhere with you. She was like, and don't sit here next <laughs> don't to me. Don't sit here next to me. 
<laughs> walked off. So that was funny. Then um, they start episode two with someone breaking into the house. Oh, wait. They went to Vegas and got married because yeah. she had some work to do in Vegas. Yeah, so they went to Vegas trip. and got married and didn't tell anything. Didn't say anything to anybody. They didn't wear their rings to... They like, kept the rings They like kept the safe. rings in a safe. Yep. <laughs> they didn't want nobody to know. Because, like, they knew how long you knew this man. Mm-hmm. It's only been a month. Like, I get that you like him and all, but things aren't really going too good with the family. And it's not a good time to jump like, into a marriage. But Deborah's mom really liked John. And it was funny when he showed up to Thanksgiving in sweatpants and they're like all dressed up and he's in sweatpants. And she was like, well, he's he's just a really hard working doctor. Like, he's okay. Like, really? Yeah. Like, the and mom like, really liked him. And the fact that Veronica, the first thing Veronica ever said to him was, why do you look homeless? <laughs> Like he, she walked or she opened the door for John for, for their first date or whatever. Veronica opened the door, and then he's like, "Oh, Deborah said she lived with her daughter Veronica. Is that you?" She was like, "Yeah, my mom said her date was a doctor. Is that you?" Is <laughs> <laughs> he? He Veron- Deborah was all dressed up like designer everything, and he had on like khakis, she had on she had on jeans, but it was like everything designer. And it was, it just, khaki, she looked short. more put together. He looked like kind of dirty looking and like yeah. hair kind of, he just kind of like licked it and like <laughs> slicked it to the side or he something. Had, like the, <laughs> the, the, um, like the polo shirt, but it wasn't a polo shirt with some uh, khaki cargo, cargo shorts, yep. khaki cargo mm-hmm. shorts so and like pretty some simple. little shoes it looked like you were in the doc- walking in the doctor's it office. It didn't look like you were it the doctor like- be like seeing people you were going to get seen you were by going a doctor. To- <laughs> yeah. So they're living together now and they're married. So like, you know, we're supposed to be open with each other about stuff and he gets a bunch of money. And he tells her like, Hey, do you think you can put take this to the bank? And she's like, I'm not going to I'm the not- bank no time soon. Right. She was- <laughs> and he's like she's like, Well you know what? How about we put it in my stash. She shows him where her stash is, and his eyes literally light Lit up like up. a Christmas tree because she was like, "He's like, how much is this? Oh, about eighty to ninety thousand dollars. Oh, just like just, just about, you know, just something small. Only in like case a zombie apocalypse. That's literally. I'm not making this up. That's what she said. Because he's like, you know, Tara goes because Tara's that, really into zombies and everything. So it was like. Okay, yeah, well, it's nice to have, but don't tell him about your stash. But he said he had all this money because she's like, because she was kind of skeptical about putting it in her bank account because yeah. IRS, and he's like, I can't just put this huge lump sum of money. Like, I make a lot, but I don't make, to, just put to lump put 10, sum 10, in there right at now. one time. So he like, oh, if you're worried about IRS, blah, blah, it's because sometimes we get patients who don't have insurance mm-hmm. and they pay me in cash. So that's when she was like, oh, okay, but I still don't want to put it in my account. Like, just put it in this big duffel bag full of money. Yeah. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. And, yeah. That's all he needed. So Veronica's like, he's still iffy to me. I don't trust him. Right. She goes to mom and was like, hey, can I put a tracking device in there? She hints, like, she says it. She straight and, up asks. And Deborah's taking it as in, like, okay, Veronica, whatever. whatever, do what you do. So she's like, you didn't say no. So but, she puts it on. <laughs> right, she put it on. She had two, and she swapped them out while one was on the charger, the other one stuck to the car. Yeah. And he didn't never had his own car. He said he owned homes in, like, different yeah, cities. Never. He said he owned all these homes, cars, everything. He always drove Deborah's car. Mm-hmm. He never drove his own car. Because he just loved the Maserati so much. So much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, in the podcast... Deborah says she don't remember saying yes to Tara or to uh, Veronica wanting to put the tracker on the car, but she was like, she definitely told me I could. Like we we monitored it together. Yeah, <laughs> so I she knew like, it was she there. never. It was no, never. No, she secret. never came right out and was like, yes, you can put it on there. But she was just like, if that's what you feel you need if to that's do, that's what you need to do. Like she, ne- she never just was like no or never showed she didn't want that to happen. Right. So. She puts a device on the car, but that's not good enough because John has a boring life. Right. So she's like, you know She's what? tracking it and he's just going to different doctor's offices. She said he will go get food. Like, to the cleaners. To the cleaners, and stuff, right. And so. then back to the house. Then picks up Deborah for work. So she's like, you know what? Let's 
<laughs> kick it up another notch. She sells one of her Chanel, was it Chanel it's purse? Chanel bag. Yeah, she sells this purse and she, she, she says gets she bank off the, of it. <laughs> yeah, she says she keeps the bags in the safe so they don't get ruined. So that's her whole reason for having her bags in the safe so she can sell them so later she, for yeah. the same price that she bought it for. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how it was worked, but whatever it was, she paid like it, she got a, like the she money to cover the for bag, for sure. the uh the private investigator. So the private investigator finds out that John's last address was at a trailer park. Mm -hmm. He did not go to Iraq like he was telling everybody. Like when he had all these cars, and stuff, he's like, yeah, it's because I, I jumped a, out of plane. I was a doctor and there, all the, and all the, the people the missile were missile shooting me. at me. <laughs> <laughs> they were shooting at me. But you know that second time I had to jump out that plane, I had a gun. I don't know if I killed anybody, but I was shooting. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah. He just had these elaborate stories. Then they found out for real that he wasn't a doctor, which Tara kind of already like right. hinted on and stuff. But it was just like all this stuff that like he was saying. Yeah, because he was saying that he was wasn't a doctor, making sense. Because they didn't know at the time that they actually met his sister, and I didn't know that until like the end of it, really, like when I was piecing it together. Mm -hmm. And because she didn't look the same as she did in her flashbacks in that first take of her, and she was like, "Trust me, like I know he, when you say he's in Iraq, he wasn't there. He was here." And I know him very well. So I'm like, is that right. the ex-wife? Right. But it wasn't. It was his it sister was the whole time. So she was like, no, I definitely know him probably better than y'all do. Yeah. So. And it was something else. Oh, he wasn't in Iraq. He was in prison. Yeah. So the time that he said he was serving for his country, he was really in prison the whole mm -hmm. time. So his last address was prison and then the trailer park. The trailer park. Yep. yep. So that was weird. Then Toby checks on because Toby like goes over to... Uh, also, Deborah Toby house. is Deborah's nephew, but yeah. his real name is Shad. Yeah, I think you said it was Shad. It's Shad, which really yeah. threw me off. But yeah, because I don't know where you get Toby from. <laughs> I don't know. But hey, I would have took Sean, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> he went over to check. Uh, he went to actually apologize to Deborah or something like that. But John mm -hmm. was there being kind of rude. No, he went to tell Deborah like the stuff that. Oh yeah, to find everything uh, they found out. Veronica went to him. To let him know, like, the stuff that he found. So, he wanted to go, like, warn his honor or whatever. Yeah. And, no, did he go to apologize? Because he was going to apologize. No, he already he talked to her. And then he was going to apologize there. Because when he when she was like, he was like, I went to go apologize to you. And yeah. Stuff. So, I think he was going to apologize. After, because on Thanksgiving, which he did not need to apologize. So, a piece that was, like, not told right away was that Deborah had a sister. Mm -hmm. and her sister was Toby's mom and her dad his Toby's dad shot mm -hmm. uh, shot her in the back of the head while she was they were going through a divorce and while she was like sitting at the table filling out some checks he shot her in the back of the head yeah. so and then he turned the gun on himself but he survived he survived so when during Thanksgiving he was just uh was that John was just saying weird stuff and he was like threatened saying how he would kill Veronica yeah. like he knew an easy way to kill her or whatever yeah he and said he could uh like do take her out with shot, one shot yeah, into the head at a thousand yards right so just, at it was this really point detailed. Toby is triggered because he like he looked at uh Deborah and was like so did you tell him like She's yeah. like, oh, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean know it. about it. Or, no, he said he knew. He's like, I didn't, I didn't mean oh, it like that. It, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, blah, blah, blah. Like, sir, you, you knew what happened to his mom. Yeah, and that was something like to really, like, you knew. He He's known for playing a mind game. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you learned that, you know that everything he did, nothing was an accident. Nothing with was him. an accident. So, yeah, he brings that up again, actually, like, when, Told me, like, all right, she's not here to apologize. Well, I know all this stuff, I about, know all you. This stuff about you. And he had a nerve to tell him, like, you should be glad that your mom you is dead be because she would, she, so she don't have to listen to So she how don't have to see, like, yeah, how much of a loser you are or something like that, she said. And so in the show, that played out as like a scene where Toby is going to his house when in all, re when in reality, how it happened was this was a text thread. Well, also it was actually yeah, like yeah and he was like and John basically like 
that's why if your wife like or your girlfriend if your kids and but like really going off on this man for absolutely no, no reason. reason and so in the show at the end of this argument that toby and um john hash john says she's not even your aunt anymore she's yeah. my wife yeah like i really hope y'all are like married. you lost the night like like <laughs> all of this is happening while John is standing there eating a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> like, was... just so natural. Like, he was really <laughs> evil. Like, just standing there eating a sandwich in his face. Like, oh, yeah. And By he... the way, we're married. And, like, that's how they all find out that they mm-hmm. are married about it. So obviously, he went back and told his cousin, like, did you know, did you know that they were married? Like, and it spreads fast because they were such a close-knit family. So mm-hmm. nothing was getting past them. Then... She gets home that night, and before they could even bring up anything, I don't think she even knew that he was saying that stuff to me. Like, she found a lot of this stuff, like, towards the end, mm-hmm. the nasty stuff he was doing. Yeah, she didn't know what she was really going She's like, all right, babe, I'm about to go check the mail. He gets a letter from the prison, and she opens it, like, let me see what's in here. Mm-hmm. He goes outside, blows up on her and stuff, like, just freaks out. Like, this is the first real... Oh, but wait, week. before we get to this, we forgot to... We started talking about the breaking in and stopped. Oh, yeah. So... While John and Deborah were in Vegas for her work trip, where they really got married, where they well, it was her work trip, but they got married. They got back from Vegas, and somebody's in the house. Like she had taken a bath, Mm -hmm. was like chilling with her drink or whatever that she got out of their kitchen. It was like chocolate milk or something that she got out of their (laughs) kitchen, and was just like chilling in the house. So this was like John, like tackle her, call the police. Deborah's really nice and doesn't want to press charges. But he's like, oh, we need cameras. We we need cameras oh, all yeah. over the house. So they have these and cameras like, all and over. And I realize you don't got any at you your job. You don't have any at your job. We need cameras there, too. Why so you, her employees are like, you haven't had. So now her employees are questioning, like, we haven't had cameras all of this time. Like, what's automatically make, all of, all of a sudden make you want to get cameras? Mm-hmm. So they were a little iffy, like. And they felt like she not trust trusting us. them, yeah. Like, what, we haven't had cameras since we opened and all of a sudden you want we cameras. We got cameras. You're with him. Okay. And you want camera right. So, the way that she that he saw that he was that Deborah was reading her his mail was he was watching her on the camera. Yeah, and he just darted out the house all of a sudden and like snatched the mail, went off on her, like making it seem like she did something wrong. Like yeah. this is illegal, blah blah. And he's like, this letter is from somebody I treated, and he's having a hard I, time. I, I helped him out, and I just sent him money every once in a while to help him out in prison. All the time, this is his old cellmate. Mm-hmm. You never really know a person. <laughs> but then she learns. Then she's like, all right, let me use these cameras to my advantage. Right. I'm pretty sure you're watching, you're me. watching me. She got dropped off at work, took an Uber back home, and was looking at the cameras as, like, she walks through the house to see if she could be seen. And she oh, goes through the Oh, that's when she pulled up. She, like, uh... No, that was later when she left it at the dealership. And yeah, that was, was later. Okay. <laughs> and she, like... It was a drawer in her office that he would not let her go in. He wouldn't let her organize it. And they'll make jokes. But he was just like, don't go in the drawer. And she respected that. But she snuck in and did. And when she did. There was a camera in there. But the way it was planted. She was looking at the camera herself on her phone. Like she was watching a live recording on her phone. So she found a way that she can get around the camera to get down into Mm -hmm. this drawer. So that he wouldn't know that that she was at home or in his drawer. And she finds like a crap load of like restraining orders and people in these forums that were talking about him and mm-hmm. all this other stuff and that's how they end that episode it was like forums of like dating site like dating yeah. site forums like don't talk to this guy he's a scammer he tried to kill me he's he like... did blah 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 <laughs> and that was like some real like serial killer type like he was keeping like why do you keep that why do you keep that like, like do you just need that rush every once in a while. Like yeah. open up your computer. Like why are you keeping that in it's, your house? Like, like you just have to print it so out bad. Copies. It was printed <laughs> out in his in his drawer. Like do we have flash drives? <laughs> <laughs> I would have took that. You can save it to your bookmarks and go read it later. You really can. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just keeping this in a filing cabinet. Uh, yeah, not even a, it wasn't even a filing cabinet. It was just like a regular dresser. And it, mm-hmm. like, you pull the shelves out and yeah, stuff. It was weird. <laughs> like, it didn't have no lock on it or anything, so. 
it was up for grabs, dude. Right. So then we get to episode three. Yeah, all of this, and we're only on episode, episode two. Yeah. That's why we had to split this in half. So we get to episode three, and that's when all the flashbacks start. So they start mm-hmm. doing flashbacks to like his life before, like with his ex-wife, or like when he was a childhood, his childhood. So they kind of focus in on how he met his wife. And she was a nurse. She That's kind of got him turned into mm-hmm. it. They met at a little bar. Little, I guess it was like, you know those bars like for police officers? They yeah. got some for like nurses too, for I guess. And, like nurses. So it was yeah. like, we're, you get off work close by to the hospital. You get off work, you go here. So it was like a lot of nurses in this bar. And John was sitting at the bar. And, you know, he met up with the, um, or he didn't meet up with her, but they met there. And they were kind of sitting at the bar talking, and she was, she ended up, um, her friends went out, and yeah. she kind of tag, stayed along with him, and then she eventually left. And then they just kept in touch from there. But while keeping in touch with each other, he like, oh, she's a nurse, like, I can kind of get some information from her. So, he went to college for... Law, I think. Well, he said he was a law student. Yeah, he said he was a law student. kind of don't really... I don't know. <laughs> he was a law student, but he ended up flunking out of college. So, like with all this, the smart, the the, the um, information that he got from his girlfriend at the time, he um, she ended up getting him into nursing school, and they're like into this program, and they're like, you know. You have her helping you out. Like, this is not what you mm-hmm. majored in, but you have her helping you out. And, like, you caught on to a lot, caught on a lot faster than any of our actual students have. Like, you're doing really good. Like, just from the information mm-hmm. that you're telling me during this meeting, you know what you're talking about. So, you let him into the program. Yeah. So, he became a nurse that way. And mm-hmm. then yeah. he eventually got a certificate. He wasn't an anesthesiologist. He was like a, um, he can do the work that an anesthesiologist does. Which is what his girlfriend did, or yeah, his wife did. His nurse can was do telling this. him, like, it's the difference between the nurse and the anesthesiologist. The nurse has to have a doctor oversee them, mm-hmm. and the anesthesiologist don't. They're don't. in their own They're field. Own. Own. So that's basically what he did. What they did, they could do the same work as an anesthesiologist, mm-hmm. but they had to have a doctor monitoring as they were doing it. But they said if you get so good, the doctors start to trust you. Like, obviously, yeah, it's like not a, what you're supposed to do. But if you get so good but, at it, yeah. they won't monitor you anymore. Not as hard as not they Not as hard as they're supposed to. Yeah. So, <laughs> he took advantage of that. Yeah, he did. And he started stealing the drugs from... Instead of giving it to the patients, he was keeping it for himself. And he was getting high off of it himself. Yeah, he was shooting them with saline. Mm-hmm. And then they was, like, marking down, like, okay, okay they had you their had dosage. dosage. So while they're in Vegas getting married, like, because it was, just like, such a spur-of-the-moment trip. While they're in Vegas mm-hmm. getting married, one of his patients just freaking, patient, patients is freaking out because he didn't give her her medicine. Yeah. And she's, like, really in the hospital freaking out. But they, they're like, well, we see where... John Meehan gave you two dosages. Blah, he, like, blah. he gave you, you the max amount. You and... can't have any more. The whole time he was giving her saline after her surgery. Like gave her a whole pep talk before the surgery. Like how he's going to take care of her. Yeah. And the doctor really knows what he's doing. And he's she had ovaries. She was having a, um, a cancer cyst move, removed from her ovaries. So like. Oh wow. Pain. I never. I didn't know exactly what yeah, it was. Yeah. Because she was talking about. Um. Because he asked her like. Is any family going to be here with you? Mm-hmm. And she's like. Oh no. Um. No one's going to be here with me. But my friend is going to. Oh yeah. Be pick here her after. Up. Mm-hmm. Like my mom had it too. In her ovaries as well. Or something like she, that she said. So she was having like. Cancer removed from her ovaries. Um. That her mom died from. So this is like. A touching kind of. Yeah. Situation for her. And he was like. Giving her a whole pep talk. And like. Let me see you smile. Like. Really pepping this lady up. And stole her drugs. And was on vacation. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like. That was. It was so messed up. Cause like. You. For his high. He was. Nothing was wrong with him. Nothing. You just wanted to get hurt. He hurt his back in Iraq. Yeah. Oh Yeah. He did. It's what he was saying. Like when he was <laughs> taking like pills and stuff, he was telling people that he hurt his back while he was in Iraq. Yeah. Man, ain't never been nowhere. It was probably from all those accidents he faked, and so which then, also took place in this episode. Then he also like stealing the drugs from the patients and stuff. They kind of go back to like 
telling about his wife and that's when like somebody told him he did this at the job that she got him into mm-hmm. when he was doing it there and so, so started, as soon as he got into this position basically he he started he was like drugs. okay this is the best way for me to get my high and it was so messed up because she went home thinking like okay you're still in these drugs where are you putting them and she's like searching through all this stuff and she just so happens to look at her kids toolbox that's in the garage and stuff and he was keeping it inside the kids toolbox and it's toy, like basically. you didn't know if they could have got a hold of it. it's their toy so they wouldn't have been wrong to grab to it grab down it. and it's in my yep. toy so it must be a toy too it's mine it's a toy yeah so thank goodness not that we know of nothing like that right. tragic happened but he was putting you put your kids at danger for this mm-hmm. so then at the same time with all these flashbacks to his wife she finds out she went to that convention remember mm-hmm. and she finds out a chick is she the speaker she talks to the speaker and she's like yeah my last name's me and she's like oh like she gets really weirded like out the, uh, the <laughs> speaker it was like a nursing convention type mm-hmm. of thing and the speaker is like what's me him like oh okay ha ha <laughs> talking it off and she's she, like, like so they're talking about kids like yeah the speaker is like yeah you know i think i finally found a guy that i want to settle down with and have children with and then like she's still just stuck on the name me him so this one that's when she tell her like john Meehan, you know we've been together he's a traveling nurse too and We've been together for about a year now, yeah, and everything is going great. Months going on a year, like they mm-hmm. had time in, like like she was talking about <laughs> settling down with this guy yeah. and having his babies. So like, so she goes or his wife goes home is like, I I talked to her, like I know everything, like she's serious, like she want you you guys are talking about kids and marriage and blah blah, so. Of course, he has one of his And tantrums. he's also drinking a, like a Pepsi or a beer at this time. So when he does his most violent, I mean, like his most anger argument of stages, he's like eating or drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't say he's hungry or anything. Right. It's not a cranky, it's a cranky <laughs> blow up, a hangry blow up. He's just he has a terrible he, temper. With a big appetite. <laughs> So yeah, he blows up on his wife. They best they um at this point they're going through a divorce, mm-hmm. and he was homeless. He was staying in his office. Yeah. So when it came to visitation, she's like, "Uh, don't forget." She they're so like they're fuck they're going off on each other, arguing back and forth. She was like, "Yeah, you better not forget the diaper bag." <laughs> <laughs> and you have nowhere to take them which means they had two daughters like yeah. so the youngest one you're gonna have to bring her back home like you can keep the older one for a little longer but the baby has to come back home because she has to have a nap mm-hmm. and you don't have anywhere to you put her have a nap for them to, like for her to take so no and i think it was so crazy because in this one they show like clips from their wedding too yeah and like if you look at the wedding video and stuff his friends are pretty much warning her about him like the the videos it's like dirty john we never thought he would get married blah 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 they're getting in the car to get to like drive off and they're like you better run like and they're not saying it to john like normally you say it to like your friend and be like like leah you get married i'm like leah run like it's a joke but when you say it to like the other like if i was to go and tell austin like (laughs) run now 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 it's a warning (laughs) Like, so yeah, they're the, basically warning him or warning his wife, like, you need to go. Like, this so, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so she finally like sits down with his friends one day and she's talking to them and he like they like telling her like, yeah, this 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 happened. Like he was scamming. Yeah. He was getting credit cards and different names to the house. He was telling old people like, oh yeah, I'll clean your gutters or I'll do this repair on your house, getting the money and never talking to never old talk people to again. Him again. Like, um, he was playing women, like they called him Dirty John yeah. and Filthy John for a reason. Like that's, that's where his name how he started did women. because of how he did women, <laughs> how, he, how he did anybody. Yeah. And is this the part <laughs> where they go into his childhood flashbacks too? Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. I think that was actually in like episode five. They start oh. going back to his. But 
that's like a sum of episode three right there. So then we go to episode four, and that's when he passes out and gets taken to the hospital. Like, out of nowhere, he just falls out, and he's throwing up, like, this green, mm -hmm. yellow stuff. Kind of remind me when I was pregnant. And I was like, I know he's not pregnant, so <laughs> what's his what case? <laughs> so he's like, so she takes him to the hospital, and that's where she finds out that he is on, like, he's a drug addict. Because mm -hmm. the doctor's like, hey, so how long has your husband doing been doing narcotics? And she's like, doing what? <laughs> Who has been doing narcotics? Like, she, she sat there the whole time, room. like, Ooh. Him? <laughs> no. He gives him out. Like, right. he's the dealer. He, <laughs> like, it's, he's the one who gives him out. <laughs> like, like he, no. no. He, was, he was on drugs, so. <laughs> That's when she decided to pack up his, mm -hmm. <laughs> pack up the entire house. All the time, he's watching her <laughs> on camera. I was hoping you brought that up. <laughs> while he's supposed to be, you know, in there recovering. He's sitting there on the phone watching her pack up the he house. He in the hospital sick. <laughs> like, not even like, I'm not talking about physical not, condition. He in like, there hurt. Like, <laughs> oh. He's like, she took the TV. Like, <laughs> wait, you know what? He was, he was just breaking down. Like, <laughs> this was the worst day of his life. And I'm like, I don't even think it was because. Money was gone. Yeah, and that's all I was like, it wasn't even because, like, oh, she's the she Like, our love is done. It was like, my money. I'm not done. <laughs> I didn't make my bit my bank account yet. Like I'm not right. finished. So at the end, they get her all moved out and stuff. And like the gist, this is like the gist of the whole this whole episode. Right. She takes him back at the end. Like she goes into the hospital and she's like, "Let me. I just want to hear your side of the story." Oh, because that's the episode where they reference um the sister dying. Remember how the mom had to have forgiveness. And so she took that oh, into, uh -huh. she so, took yeah, that into about, account. About how, which, so if this was like episode two when they went to church? Yeah, I think so. So we skipped Christmas because they went to church for like around Christmas time. Mm. So they we go did. to church. Yep, because we forget left out Tara's other blow up. Oh, yeah, because Tara and Deborah end up going to therapy together about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, okay, so around Christmas time. John and um Debbie go to church and it's like kind of like their family church. And John got her. Another reason John got her was because he said he goes to church too. And when he asked, like she tell him what church she goes to, or yeah, she tell him what church she she goes to. And he was like, oh, I go to that church too. But it's like it's a mega church in California, so obviously you're not gonna like know no, everybody, everybody and run into everybody. So she believed him, and it's also the church that her mom goes to. And also the church that Deborah's ex brother in law goes to, the man who killed her mm -hmm. sister. So John was like, he kind of fed into that too. Like your mom forgave him for killing his, her yeah. daughter, and like you can forgive me you for can lying about all this stuff. And it's like he owned up to what he did from the beginning. You've been hiding behind all of this the whole time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so she kind of thought about how her mom forgave her ex brother in law. So then she figured that she could forgive John, and it was just dumb. But Christmas, um, so Tara and Deborah went to therapy for the Thanksgiving situation for when she put her out for arguing with John or for going through John's stuff or whatever. She put Tara out. So on Christmas, before Christmas, they go to therapy, and Tara's like, well at least keep him away from the kids mm -hmm. like because tara's um or deborah's other kids or, or her daughter i think it was her daughter in real life but on the show it was her son who had kids yeah so she was like just keep him away from the children like i don't want him around the kids because i know how it feels to have like you have these guys around and then they mm -hmm. leave and then it leads the same way it did for me i feel like it'd do for them like as a kid, I thought it was always my fault mm -hmm. when these guys were like Which, with you and so in love with you and liked us. Reason. And then, yeah, and then they just up and left. She was like, that messed up my self esteem. I thought I did something. I thought it was my fault that these guys were always leaving. Like, I don't want the kids to feel the same way. So, Christmas comes around. Deborah gets to the house or whatever, and she has all of these gifts for her grandkids. So, John takes them inside the house with for the her. Big Santa with sack the with Santa the Santa sack. hat. She puts the Santa hat on him, though, right? By the she way, she stuck it on his head. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. It's so, 
Because you know, like, if the kids see that's whoever got the gifts, that's who they run to. They're and, like, kids. that's who they're obsessed with. Because technically, you just gave them the <laughs> gifts. I don't care if you didn't buy not one of them. You put those gifts in those kids' hands. Yeah. So you're the one they're going to love. They're going to love and thank you and hug you and all this other stuff. So, so she seen that and she, like, stormed out. She stormed I wanted out. Too, she though. stormed out. Mind you, Grandma doesn't see anything wrong with John. She doesn't think there's anything wrong with John. So, Grandma runs after Tara. Tara's in the bed crying. So, Grandma runs after her. She like, you know, you don't have to talk to him. You can just come out like you're... So, on the podcast, Tara was like, I know they thought I was being a brat. Like, she was the youngest. And during the time she was being raised... She was raised by natties because that was at the start of Deborah's interior yeah. design career. So, she was raised by nannies. So, they think, like, in her head... Oh, her mom's just being taken away from her again. She's just being a brat. When really, she knew something was wrong, was wrong with this with man. Him and nobody beginning. was taking it seriously. No, they was like, because I didn't like how the mom, like, kind of downgraded and was like, oh, she just thinks that he's taken away from me. That's the only reason she, she feels that way. She thinks that if she do this, that the rest of the family won't like him. But I'm like, no, it's not. She had a legit reason in therapy reason. to say that. Like, that is something that happens with kids when you bring men around mm-hmm. them and like and then you had to think mm-hmm. you weren't if she was raised by nannies then that's another justified reason why she is why that she protective over you yeah so that happens after she takes him back she like she's like all right well you know we're married and i really feel like a lot of her decisions were made based off the fact that this was her fifth marriage I do. Was this the fourth or the fifth? This was the fifth. Because when she met him, remember she confessed and told him, like, I was four times. uh, So that's the recap of one through four. Was there anything you didn't like about this? (laughs) The way she acted, like, she just took him back. And, like, everybody is telling you, like, all these, they hired a private investigator. Yeah. And you just threw all of that out the window. And you're taking him that like you are starting like, to I get to forgiveness me. but for you can forgive somebody and not take them back you That's, can forgive them you can be his friend yeah like you can forgive him and never talk to him again you need to get i need to be separated from you you can you can forgive him and never talk to him again <laughs> it's possible so yeah i didn't like that either and i didn't like how she downplayed her kids feelings because mm-hmm. like okay yeah you got kids that feels the way they do about your boyfriends whatever but at the same time you're their you're their parent you're you their should kind of like, mm-hmm. if it's really upsetting her to the point, like, you didn't have a, one kid miss a holiday, another one, Veronica didn't go to Christmas because she didn't want to be around them. Mm-hmm. Like, your kids are missing out on stuff on that. Like, maybe there is a red flag, or maybe you should take what they're saying if they're be serious. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, like, the only thing that really kind of bothered me besides what you said. another thing, so, she, listening to the podcast, Deborah went to therapy, mm-hmm. and the therapist was telling her, like, oh, your kids can't rule your life. Like, if you're happy, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. nothing. Like, you can't let them ruin what you love. So, she was like, she had to, at that point, she was setting boundaries for them. But it's like, okay, you can set boundaries, but. You can validate someone's you feelings. You can validate at the same their time feelings while boundaries. still setting boundaries. Yeah, because they're still your kids. You can't really just toss them to the curb. You got married in a month. You didn't even, like, baby step them into it. And didn't tell them. Yeah. So. What were some of the things you liked about it, about these first four episodes? How accurate it was. Okay. Like, like I said, listening to the podcast, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to. The only reason I listened to the podcast again because I listened to it. This was like two or three years ago when I yeah. first listened to the podcast, so I wanted to listen again to make sure that everything matched up. I said, besides the name changes that I didn't really understand because you already said the name of the podcast, why well, change it in the show? Yeah. But it was right. <laughs> it was still like it was very accurate. That's yeah, that's good because I didn't listen to the podcast yet. I wanted to like read through this. Mm-hmm. I want to go home and listen to it. Um, I like that the flashbacks kind of like reference what was going on mm-hmm. in the current situations and stuff like right. that. So I did like that, like when they started bringing those in. That was pretty enjoyable. Whatever. So we're going to go to moments that stood out for us. So uh, Veronica being as mean as she was from the start, mm-hmm. I like kind of drew to her because I'm like, she's interesting. Yeah. Like, but she's literally mean to, like, she's like not mean. She's blunt. She's very she's blunt. She's very blunt to everybody. Forward. 
Yeah, and then I liked how how Deborah she did go to therapy and like mm-hmm. when yeah, situations she was happened, she brought her kids in. Yeah, so that was nice. Right, she did go to she went to therapy with both Veronica and Tara to like I guess get other more insight. Yeah, about the situation, not make it seem like oh I'm right and this is it. Like I'm the mom, this is it. She actually mm-hmm. went to therapy. And she got a second opinion, so mm-hmm. that like I like that. Then. A moment that stood out when he suggested they get a security with the safe deposit box, uh, whatever it's called, mm-hmm. at a bank to put the money in. She's like, you can't put money in there. And he's like, yeah, you can. It's yours. Like, and Then she goes in there. And remember, he took all the money out. He took everything And he out. told her, I invested it. And then suggesting the cameras, I thought that was weird. Because Why? it's funny how my house get broken into when you come around. When you come around. But we wasn't thinking like that then, so it's okay. Um, another one was when he told Veronica, he was telling Toby that, the we talked about the shot, like killing her. Mm-hmm. He was like, how can that girl like me? And he's like, you just gonna let Veronica be Veronica. And, and I wrote it down because I had to like go back. He said he can take her out with a Winchester point thirty to 60 at a, hundred, uh-huh. a thousand yard headshot. Yeah. Why would you Why tell you anyone wrong? that? Why, and and this is her their mother. In front of and her cousin? And she just laughed it off. They were just yeah, laughing she it was off. Like, <laughs> but you could tell it was uncomfortable. And like, it's lucky that Toby was like as gentle as mm-hmm. he was. Because if he was in a hood, they'd be fighting. Like, <laughs> if this was another portion of California, <laughs> if you were like five blocks over, <laughs> it'd be a problem. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what it's... Oh, I have more that stood out. We talked about it, just like the friends warning the wife. Like, I thought that was like... Mm-hmm. They're trying to tell you something. Red flag. Hey, stop. So, what did you learn from this documentary? What did I learn? That my theory is right, that you don't trust John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad because the camera looked like it zoomed in when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> um listen to your kids yeah like you can't you can set boundaries and still validate somebody's yes, feelings yeah. you don't like this next one selling purses bring in bank <laughs> <laughs> put your purses in the safe use those dust bags that they come with <laughs> that's what they're for like that's what you use it for I'm like, I just thought that my like... purses are definitely on the shelf with the dust bags tucked inside of them. <laughs> I thought it was to make sure the inside don't get dirty, but okay. <laughs> right. And would you Maybe I got it the other way around. Like the tail fart bags, the house of like, side bags, like this... the marker coils, the Louis Vuitton Ow. bag. Ow. The dust That's bag a... is inside of the laptop. Hey, you're a little backwards. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I throw mine away. I can't even... <laughs> I know. The only, ones that are, in out. the only ones that are still in there are the ones that I haven't used yet. Like the brand See? new Telfar bag. So how are you going to be able to know if you wore one already if it's not in the dust Don't. bag? Inside the dust bag means worn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. give that. <laughs> Will you recommend this, the first four? Absolutely. I do too. Hands down. I really feel like it's I mean, really I interesting. I, I uh, recommended it to yeah, you. Yeah, so... My mom got into it because I told her about it, like, when it first came out. She's like, oh, this is the podcast she told me to listen to. Like, yeah. So she actually watched the Dirty John series without me. Oh. I mean, it, honestly, I wouldn't wait on you either because it was good. Like, me and Kanan were Kanan. watching it. <laughs> and, like, he fell asleep. And I was like, mm. it's not for you anyway. Over here. <laughs> yeah, like, did you miss in. episode she, six? <laughs> I walked in the room. And she like, oh, this episode two. Episode two watch what? Episode one. <laughs> and watch it. I know about it. It's like, yeah, you, you was busy. <laughs> we didn't make no commitment. <laughs> yeah. I told you I recorded it. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> you didn't say you were watching it today. I thought I thought you were just recording for us, like. You know we watch this true crime stuff together. (laughs) That is all for episodes one through four. And we hope you guys like it. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix and it's really good. Mm -hmm. And you guys can follow along with what we're talking about with it too. 
Because for episodes four through eight will come out in two more weeks. Yep, so it gives you enough time to catch mm-hmm. up and so we can get to like the real stuff. Because like five through eight is when it really like oh, that's when it kick all. jumps and stuff. That's and it gets it good. You think one through four was <laughs> was a lot. You Just thought a marriage in one up the first episode was something? You have not heard, heard nothing yet. Episode eight just like it closes you out on some stuff. Yeah, so stay tuned and we hope you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on our notification bell, and mm-hmm. follow all our social medias. Yep. And all down below. All of that will be down below. So thanks. I will see you guys later. Thank you for listening to Crime in a Men. You can find the transcripts, pictures we've discussed, as well as the links to our references at our website. There, you can also find the links to all of our social media. If you have a case you'd like us to talk about, you can leave a comment down below or go to the Contact Us page of the website and leave a suggestion. Each month, we will choose one for an episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps a lot.